Richard asks, have you heard Norway's possible entry for Eurovision this year? So like me, you're probably wondering now, would that wolf eat the banana? Well the short answer is yes, at least if it wanted to. In fact, fruit actually forms a small part of most wild wolves' diets. It depends whereabouts you are in the world, but it can include raspberries, blueberries, apples, strawberries, and of course grass, which is used as a way to scour the intestines as opposed to a source of food. Captive wolves are sometimes fed pumpkins and watermelons, and yes, this is Atka eating a banana. But does this very diet make one of our most iconic carnivores an omnivore? We can learn from wolves, not only about the world around us, but the world within. They occupy a unique place in the land and the mind, in these dark hours at the dawn of the Anthropocene. Wolves are part of the order Carnivora. They're carnivores, but they're also omnivores. The difference is that carnivore or carnivora is a taxon on the tree of life. Omnivora doesn't exist. It's just a term what we can apply to a species to show that it can eat both meat and plants. But it's more complex than that. Because of course it is. It's science. There's a pretty big range of words actually to describe how much meat is in a certain animal's diet but perhaps the most basic are obligate carnivores and facultative. Obligate carnivores take it to the extreme. Meat is essential for their survival, and some don't even have the ability to digest plants. These are also known as true carnivores, and it's a relatively small group, but it includes, among others, sharks, birds of prey, spiders, crocodiles, and cats. That's all cats, by the way, including your cat. Other animals, wolves included, fall into the category of facultative. This means that they're not only limited to eating other animals. Depending on what proportion of their diet is made of meat, they can fall into three different categories. Starting with the extremes again, any animal whose diet includes upwards of 70% meat is known as a hypercarnivore, which would make for an awesome band name. Just to be confusing by the way, this does include true carnivores. A little less bloodthirsty, and yes, blood does contain enough water in it to be hydrating, are mesocarnivores. They're typically smaller and more abundant than hypercarnivores. Species included in this are otters, martins, and the red fox. But don't go confusing them with mesopredators. A coyote's diet includes 50 to 70% meat, as does a red fox's, but both of them can be apex predators in their ecosystems. At the other end of the spectrum are hypocarnivores. These are animals with 30% or less meat in their diet, and the term gets very little use. I had to do a bit of googling to make sure that it was actually legit, and it is, but very few times does it actually get to be used. Raccoons, black bears, and of course the giant panda are all hypocarnivores. One of the telltale signs of this kind of diet is actually in their teeth, and I've linked a paper down in the description that goes into this in a lot more detail. So, where does our banana-eating wolf fit onto the spectrum? Well, on paper, they're facultative carnivores, specifically hypercarnivores. When prey is abundant, wolves will choose to live off animals that they can catch. In practice, however, different wolf populations can have very different diets depending on where they are in the world and what prey is available to them. While some may predate on large ungulates, others can subsist almost entirely off of garbage, and so lumping all of the animals into one category together just wouldn't work in reality. Ideally, a wolf needs about 5.5 kilograms, that's 12 pounds of meat a day, in order to be healthy, but in the real world, they go for days and often weeks fasting, and when they do catch something and eat it, a wolf can eat 25% of its body mass in one go. So in response to Subwoofer's lyrics, yeah, you could give that wolf a banana. Just because it's a hypercarnivore doesn't mean that it's not an omnivore, but it'll still be hungry. By the way, Subwoofer is obviously a play on the word Subwoofer, but Wolfer was an actual occupation in the US and Canada of killing wolves for a living, and it continued right up until the mid-20th century, 
but just a couple of decades before wolves began to be the object of serious scientific study. If you'd like to see a video on that, let me know down in the comments. I hope you found this video interesting and have learned something new from it. I've definitely learned a lot myself from writing it. If it's given you the urge to help out in supporting wolf conservation, then maybe go ahead and check my shop down in the description. There's actually a new outfit that I've just released on there. Links to the resources I've used are, as always, down in the description. Shout out to Richard again for inspiring the content for this episode. If you think you know somebody who is interested in wolves and natural sciences, please do share this channel with them and help it grow. And thank you for being a part of the Dark Wolf Project once again. I'll see you next time. And before that wolf eats my grandma, give that wolf a banana.